And this is part two for express approach in quick learning um, uh, for repertoire for black. Now, it's a lot more difficult when you try to pick up and learn some one given system for black than for white because you don't have as much flexibility. So in, with a white, if you don't make really the best moves, you may not get advantage, you may get an equal position, but you're comfortable with your play and you are okay. With a black, you have a lot more responsibility because you cannot be passive. If you are overly passive, you may get really bad position or if you are inaccurate in complications, you may just get lost position. So you have a lot more responsibility, you have to be a lot more precise. So, well, you don't know, with the white you choose the first move, with the black you don't know. You have to be prepared for E4, D4, C4 continuations, and you have to be comfortable every time uh, after you, once you pass the opening stage. So, well, let's start with E4. What can we do on E4 to learn one safe system that will get us through the opening? Uh, well, we know the Sicilian is one of the sharpest openings uh, in, uh, in opening theory on E4 or D4 together on the whole opening theory. So if this is the sharpest opening, then you have to learn the most because you cannot play sharp, op sharp openings with, without knowing uh, all theory around it. So we must exclude for this preparation Sicilian. So not too many other openings left. I, I'm excluding French defense since I don't believe it and if someone recommends you French to play French with black, it's not going to be me. And Carl Kahn is a little too passive too. So I, as one of the openings that I can recommend to play, and it's easy to learn, and it's relatively safe, is d6, d4, knight f6, knight c3, well, now, if we play g6 move, then it's regular pure defense. But e5 move is something I want to talk about and something I want to discuss. <clears throat> now, e5 move, as you can tell immediately, uh, uh, white has a chance to go to end game right from the opening. Well, it's, it's going to be queens of the board, but it's not going to be exactly an end game. It's going to be kind of a middle game without queens because every other piece except for the queen will be on the board. So the most expected continuation for white is d takes e, d takes e, and queen takes d8, which we're going to analyze first. Also, other possible uh, move is knight f3. It's for a longer game and more of a middle game and possibly more complicated. Well, actually, it's not possibly. It is more complicated. So let's start with d takes e. And d takes e, queen takes d8, king takes d8. And let's talk this position first before we make any moves. Uh, we have equally equal development. We have symmetrical pawn structure. The problem, if there is a problem, any problem for black, is that their king moved and white has a chance to castle long side, castle queen side, with a check, which gives them enough tempo. But is this enough to get any kind of an advantage? Hi, my name is John Fanning. I'm CEO of Multimedia Engineering Corp. 
I'm here today to introduce International Grandmaster Roman Jinji Hashvili in a new series of instructional chess videos. Before we begin, I'd like to read a few excerpts from a letter we received from Barry G. Baldwin, a satisfied customer from Roman's first series. I recently had an opportunity to review four of Roman's tapes, which I found not only enjoyable, but from an educational standpoint, far better than any other learning medium I have studied to date. I began seriously studying chess in college, reading through dozens of books, and playing through literally thousands of games. Roman's videos were, for me, the best educational medium. They educate, they motivate, and they make learning fun. Roman's style is a no-nonsense, vigorous expose of chess concepts, philosophies, and ideas. I took private lessons with Samuel Leshevsky for several years until he passed away. He recognized Roman's abilities and recommended him to me for future lessons. No higher recommendation did Roman need. I'm probably expert strength, and with these videos, there is no doubt that I could become a strong master. Thank you, Roman, for sharing your great knowledge, your wit, and repartee. I look forward to future videos, which will provide years of chess enjoyment and an increased understanding of the game. I'm sure that you'll enjoy these videos as much as Barry Baldwin. Thank you. Hello. In a part one of Nimtso Indian Defense, we talked about Hubner variation of Nimzo Indian and all possible surroundings, all possible continuations uh, for white, <coughs> all deviations. But we didn't stop. We did cover d4, knight f6, c4, e6, knight c3, bishop d4, the main Hubner variation. In the part one, we also covered queen c2 variation. We covered knight f3, followed by g3, and also Leningrad variation. But the but white has a lot more variety to play here. And um, black should be ready. We should be ready for them. They are not very difficult to learn. Basically, what you learn here, not the move by move how it goes, but you should learn pattern, the ideas, and then even you forgot, even if you forgot concrete variation, it's gonna be very easy to remember if you know the basic ideas. So let's start now with A3 move, so-called Zamish variation of Nimtso Indian defense. Don't mix it with uh, Zamish in King's Indian. There is also Zamish in King's Indian. It's interesting that Zamish in Zamish system in Nimzo Indian and in King's Indian, they have almost identical ideas to play F3 and E4 and try to get superior position in center. So what happens after white's A3? Hello, my name is Roman G. Jihashvili, and this DVD about latest developments and latest interesting novelties in Nimzo India. This DVD in, is based on the games in last two years. Some very good players, there are some of uh, my games played on the internet, and I mention it almost in every video when I show my game. That means it's the game that I understand best why to do it, and I try to present it in a way that it can be easily understood by you. So we're going to touch various different variations of Nimzo, Nimzo Indian. And when I show you the games between masters or grandmasters, I will have theoretical <coughs> input on it as well. 
What I mean by theoretical input is when I show the game that you better understand why some move was made and where is the main theory ends, where novelty starts and the purpose of it, I will have to have some theoretical input. It's mostly games, partially some interesting theoretical observations. So let's start from one of my games that I played on the internet. There are not too many of my games I want to show. And now, d4, knight f6, c4, e6, knight c3, bishop b4. This is basically, this whole DVD, basically for black. What I would recommend to play on certain variation for black and how black played well, because focus on it for black. In the future, we're going to make the same thing for white. But here, from black's perspective only, whole DVD. And variation I want to touch is A3. A3 is very old variation. It was extremely popular at one time, and it was almost considered as the best way to play against Nimzo Indian. Then it became less popular, and lately it's coming back. Well, bishop takes c3, b takes c3, b6. This is one of the possible variations. It's not the main variation. Main variation is c5, but I strongly recommend b6, and I have played number of games with b6 in past. After b6, f3, that's a normal move, intending to play e4. That's why white wanted black to take on c3 quickly to establish pawn advantage, pawn advantage in its center. So after f3, bishop a6, e4, knight c6. I gotta tell you that this is very well known theoretical position. And main move here, bishop g5, but I had bishop d3 quite often. Idea is understandable because black is intending knight a5, and that's exactly what was played, and now queen e2. Now we're talking about Nimzo Indian defense. C4, E6, C4, E6, Knight G3, Bishop B4, E3, C5, Bishop D3, Knight C6, Knight F3, we take on C3, BC, D6, Castle, and E5. This position is very, very well known in the theory. The white can play DE, DE, or D5. Actually, after D5, is known that black cannot play knight e7 because queen c2 and the castle. Now knight h4. And knight h4, it amazingly loses the game because E4, and now it's clear that white must take the pawn if white goes back, G5, 
why it simply loses the game. On e4, bishop takes, knight takes, queen takes, and g5, double exclamation mark, is still good because knight is trapped. In case knight goes to f3, bishop f5 move, and queen is trapped. That's not good. In this position, d, knight takes e5 is possible, but d e is better. e4 is no good. Yeah, knight g5. Now white starts immediate attack on king side. Better even queen c2. A castle, castle. Knight g5. Black to move. Incredible move. King H8. Why King H8 not G6? For example, H6. Why? Because why goes Knight E4? Knight takes E4. Bishop takes E4. And position is unclear. That's why DE Knight G5 castle. Queen C2 and King H8. What is the idea of move King H8? Okay, I'm gonna go to show you. Knight A7 loses. Knight A7, Bishop H7, G6, Bishop G6, Fg and queen g6. Now it looks like white is okay. White is three pawn. White is lost. Because bishop f5, queen h5, bishop h7. White having three pawns, black has tremendous attack. Rook g8, queen f6, and white loses. You can go and look at it, and you cannot come to any other conclusion than this. Uh, castle, queen c2, king h8. Same thing happens on bishop h7. Bishop h7, g6. Bishop g6, fg, and the queen takes g6. That's the only visual thing that white, in fact, has no attack. The black is winning rook g8 and bishop f5. And queen h6, king g8. And queen g6, queen g7. It lost for white. King h8, white is lost here. Unless they play knight e4, it b6. I came out with thing that is preferably better than knight f6. Queen f6, bishop e4, and I came out that this position is terrible for white. Bishop a6, bishop d5, rook a d8, queen a4, Queen a4, knight a5, e4, queen e7, 
M4 and the black is totally winning here. Queen D7. White has to take and black takes. White has to take, yeah, I say, but white doesn't have to take. It's just white doesn't have a better option. If queen a3, bishop takes c4, and white's position is broken apart. Now, gonna go back, castle, knight g5, king g8, f4, ed, f4, ed, cd, if ED would have been positioned from before, variation before. CD, knight B4, queen C3, knight D3, queen D3. Interesting here is one final assessment is b5 move it's amazing is a very very good and cb a6 and black is dominating on the white square and this is now the only important factor in this game. Pawn takes on a6 is not good because bishop is going to take on a6. And uh, dc is not good and white is lost. e4 is not good. e4, a, b. a, b is good and h6 is good. Okay. Knight f3 and bishop b7. This case concludes this chapter of Deep So India. As soon as Mr. Nimzo Indian invented this classic defense, everybody jumped on the bandwagon and began playing it. Like the other big two, it has a solid reputation, but it is neither as dull as the Queen's Gambit declined, nor as dodgy as the King's Indian defence. I believe I've selected some exciting variations, but we've got a lot to get through, so hang on to your seat, and let's get started. OK, before you pop the kettle on, here's the running order of the video. First I start off with the move 4, Bishop D2. This is the first of the fourth move deviations, and here I introduce the concept of the importance of the E4 square and demonstrate why fianchettoing this bishop is such a good idea. It's not so important that you don't get to double the pawns on C3 in this line, because the knight in the centre of the board after bishop takes knight and bishop takes bishop more than compensates black for the lack of the bishop pair. 4e3 has perhaps been the most consistent choice of strong players throughout history. Here I demonstrate how you can actually pile on the pressure on this c3 knight despite the fact that this bishop is locked inside of the pawn chain. Here I show for the first time exactly what happens when the bishop ends up capturing the knight on c3 and white ends up with doubled c pawns. Pressure is invariably built up on the c4 pawn and also we see a few ideas involving the knight hopping into the centre and the queen zipping out to h4. All pretty active stuff. The provocative sameish variation a3 just sees more of the same really. Bishop takes c3, check b takes c3 and I show you a plan in which black simply piles up the pressure b6, bishop a6 and the knight c6 to a5, ganging up on this weak pawn. 
The rarely seen 4G3 is designed specifically to prevent Black from fianchettoing his queenside bishop with b6. However, a simple plan is shown in which Black concedes his dark square bishop and then blocks up the position by putting his pawns naturally enough on dark squares. More dynamism is introduced in a favourite line of Kasparov's in which I demonstrate why it's important for black to keep a grip over the e4 square even at the cost of weakening his own king side. Pawn structure becomes an important factor in these variations. As far as white is concerned, the real man's move is 4 bishop g5, the Leningrad variation. Black must really do things out of the ordinary and must look to playing the move c5 which facilitates a potential queen a5 and knight e4. If allowed, this is an excellent strategy, but if not, black can block things up with a view to opening it up again under favourable circumstances. 4f3 is possibly the most unsuccessful variation for white in the history of the Nimzo Indian. Here he weakens the f2 square and black gets some devastating counterplay along the c5 to g1 diagonal. The Nimzo Indian defence, that's 1d4, knight f6, 2c4, e6, three knights c3 and now bishop b4 is without doubt one of black's most reliable defences to the queen's pawn and this is true at all levels of chess. Let us list the advantages of this excellent opening. With three bishop b4 black develops rapidly preparing to castle. He pins the knight on c3 setting up the positional threat of bishop takes c3 check doubling white's pawns after which he can play to fix and win those pawns. Black's own pawn structure is elastic. He keeps all options open. He may play with c5, he could play with d5, he could play with b6, or he could even play with d6 and then e5. And this flexibility especially appeals to master players. I've constructed a creative repertoire for you on this DVD which is predominantly modern and aggressive. It suits our time and you will enjoy trying out some of the suggested variations. It shows that even here on the well trodden highways of the Nimzo Indian there are still new ideas to be found. OK well to start the ball rolling on this DVD I'm going to consider the main themes that run through the Nimzo Indian and try to assume that the listener is a starter in this opening. I mean, I don't think that this is going to be a, a section which is particularly relevant to beginners only. I think that everybody will benefit from, from reviewing this section of the DVD. But I do think it is important to cover some of the main basic ideas which run through the Nimzo Indian. And the first idea I want to consider is the notion that black develops very rapidly and coherently. And I'm going to use a game from the 2005 Melody Amber tournament between Barayev playing white and Topolov playing black, so two of the best players in the world. And um, I think this does demonstrate how quickly black can develop in the Nimzo Indian and how dangerous his initiative can get if white lets him streak ahead in development. Now we'll quickly play through the opening moves to get to the basic position. And Barayev plays queen to c2 the so-called classical variation which we will be examining in a bit more detail a little later on. Suffice it to say that White's idea in this position is to go a3 and to try to nab the two bishops without tears. If a3 forces black to surrender the bishop with bishop takes c3 check then White is happy. Okay White's development slows down for a while he has to waste time on um, a pawn move and another queen move but he nabs the two bishops and this variation um, had its initial day in the, um, the time of Capablanca. Capablanca was the guy who propelled this variation into the limelight. It went into the doldrums for a long time as, as Black managed to find various ways of um, countering 
White's idea. But recently, uh, in the last 15 or so years, Queen C2 has become by far the most popular uh, fourth move for White, and um, and therefore has to be respected. If you play the Nimzo Indian, you have to have a good defence to Queen to C2. Uh, 